Meet a group of Christchurch military enthusiasts planning on following in the wheel ruts of the Long Range Desert Group. 1940. The Allied British forces are battling the Italians in North Africa, and one officer creates a unit that achieved the impossible and changed military strategy forever. The soldiers he chose for the task were resourceful, independent, and able to make do hundreds of miles behind enemy lines. Those soldiers were Kiwis. Hello, I'm Bernard Shapiro, and I have a story to tell. Ralph Bagnold, an Englishman, had before the war surveyed parts of the Sahara using Model T forts. He proposed that a small force could infiltrate and disrupt the enemy's supply lines. The New Zealanders volunteered to a man and were so effective that by 1941 the British, the Rhodesians and the Indians soon had troops of their own in operations, but never without a Kiwi or two on board. The long-range desert group had arrived and their success was reflected in a comment made during the desert campaign by the Africa Corps commander, Field Marshal Erwin Rommel. The LRDG fügt uns mehr Schaden zu than jede andere gleich starke englische Einheit. In 2008, a British expedition invited a group of Kiwis in Canterbury on a commemorative recreation of the LRDG in honor of the impact New Zealand made in this legendary unit. The Kiwis again volunteered to a man many of whom had had family serving in the LIDG. So began a series of initiatives to raise awareness of our country's place in world history by living, eating, sleeping and training in the wheel ruts of our grandfathers. Equipment, literature and vehicle purchases followed. The members of Kiwi Troop amassing a fleet of our own World War II vehicles to restore and take to Africa. This expedition will take us from Cairo into the Saharan Dune Sea of Egypt and Libya to return dusty and hardened to the battlefields of Bache, Tobruk, and El Alamein to lay wreaths on the graves of those who failed to return. To gain funding for the restoration of our vehicles, I've created a television series that will teach New Zealanders how to restore the vehicle of their dreams. A bit of rust and restoration also highlights classic vehicles that have made a difference to Canterbury and New Zealand as a whole. But funding for this series will not be available until early next year. At present, Kiwi Troop is training in World War II mechanics, convoys, camp duties and navigation with only two Willys Jeeps and some Land Rovers. On completion of the restoration phase, Christchurch residents will awake to the sight of seven sand-coloured Jeeps and trucks festooned with expeditionary supplies and uniform lads filled with historical information for schools, clubs and parades. What this group needs now our materials and funds in order to develop and restore our vehicles, plus retain a warehouse from which we can film and showcase our television series. Local businessman and enthusiast Lyle Hood has provided the temporary lease of a warehouse in Litchfield Lanes at a discounted price with a view of fleets of vintage vehicles enhancing the reputation and atmosphere of the local businesses there. Soon, patrons will be able to sit back and regard a Britain motorcycle or perhaps a traction engine steaming slowly past in a unique and heritage setting. At present, K Troop are paying for this lease out of their own pockets, but cannot sustain this practice for long. Without assistance from the New Zealand public, these projects will not succeed, and the memories of a slice of history, the very building blocks of what gives a nation a sense of self-worth, will continue to fade and Kiwis will continue to look overseas for their values. As to Africa, by experiencing firsthand the hardships that our forebears endured, not merely through books or viewing archives, but by practical and physical immersion, we will be able to film, document and cover the conditions our veterans never talked about to their families. The result will be an educational documentary with a rare insight into a past that New Zealand has almost forgotten despite our promise, lest we forget. Rather, let us soon be able to say, we now remember them.